Hello and welcome to Sportsline. Brendan Rigney here along with Jake Smolinski. Another great show for you. Senior forward Joe Farrell was in the studio earlier and later Tyler Harper will be here for some exploring headlines. Some exciting stuff. But first, let's catch up on what went down last week for our athletes. It was a good day for LaSalle's men's cross country team on the 18th as the Explorers placed second at the Mainline Invitational with a combined score of 76 points. On the four mile run, redshirt senior Ian Barnhill finished 11th with a time of 19 minutes and 50 seconds. Right behind him, junior Bradley Hewer came in two seconds later to take 12th. In 21st place, senior Nick Libby clocked in at 20 minutes and 13 seconds, followed by Steven Lewandowski with a 20 minute, 22 second run to earn 26th place. Other notable Explorer performances include Nick LaFaver at 32nd, 30, yeah, 32nd, excuse me, Brandon Robertson at 36, and David Ozerowski at 39. And for the women's team, there were some familiar faces at the Mainline Invitational as LaSalle took on Temple, Yupon, and Villanova for the second time in two weeks. Now overall, the Explorers took fifth place, edging out Haverford in the three-mile race, and Megan Connell took 15th place, a minute behind first place runner Blanca Fernandez of Temple. The sophomore all-conference runner tailed Fernandez at the Big Five Invitational and stayed on her heels uh, in this course, uh, on this longer course as well. And not far behind, Lauren Colombari made her LaSalle debut and placed 22nd in the 75 runner field. In an odd twist, the transfer student previously finished the Big Five race right behind Connell while she was unattached to LaSalle. Now following closely behind Colombari was senior Rebecca Scardaletti and junior Olivia Boyer, who placed 39th and 44th respectively. LaSalle hits the road on October the 2nd, this time to compete in the Paul Short run at Lehigh University. The golf team didn't hit the fairway this week, but they have a tough tournament ahead of them. The Explorers will travel to George Mason University to take part in the Patriot Intercollegiate. The team last played at Rutgers, earning third place overall. Redshirt junior PJ Asierno won the Invitational by one stroke after birdieing on the 18th hole. He will look for similar success at George Mason, along with grad student Tony Eifoon and junior Joe Markman. The Patriot Intercollegiate will begin on Sunday, September 27th and conclude the following day. And LaSalle's women volleyball team followed up their 3-1 win over <laughs> Fairleigh Dickinson with the Big Five tournament. Anna Gomez and I headed out to Temple for the coverage. <laughs> LaSalle women's volleyball took to the Big Five tournament at Temple's McGonagall Hall on the weekend of September 18th and 19th. Slated to be some of the most competitive matches of the season, the Explorers went in fresh-faced on Friday to take on Temple. However, the Owls were ready to defend their court and picked apart LaSalle in three straight sets. It wasn't exactly pretty, despite promise in the second and third sets, but you wouldn't exactly gain back momentum from a 25-7 opening set. On Saturday's day of play, once again, the stars did not align. The Explorers first faced off against Villanova in the 1 p.m. slot. Ashley Felton and Madison Cuck led the game up top with seven kills each but the points couldn't exactly add up to a victory. Villanova's front line was brutal, to say the least. The Explorers could handle it, but simple mistakes and botched serves sealed the deal. Too many long volleys ended in a flunked spike, which kept feeding the Nova's momentum. LaSalle dropped the second set 25-15, to even with a solid streak, which brought the deficit within four. Once again, momentum was not on our side in the third set, but we did keep things moving back and forth until the score got to 10 each. If you could imagine, morale wasn't exactly the best going into the third and final match of the tourney against Penn. Probably the most even team we were going to play this weekend, they didn't pull any punches. Despite a strong day of play from Brianna Davis with 19 kills overall, Penn's back line was a brick wall against our front attack. Penn managed to hit .552 this set and dialed in on our weak spots. Overall, it was a competitive game to watch. Even though the scores weren't in our favor, the Explorers were holding on and putting up a fight. As we move into A-10 play, hopefully women's volleyball will hit their stride. With the Big Five tournament behind them, this leaves LaSalle's record at 6-10, and 10, but Coach Rumgala will surely put this back into a winning season. For Sportsline, I'm Anna Gomez. And the volleyball squad finally got back to their winning ways on September 22nd with a decisive 3-2 victory over UMBC. This marked only the third match all year that the Explorers have played all five sets, their last being their season opener. LaSalle got rolling quickly against the Retrievers, cruising to a 25-18 set victory. The following three sets were traded back and forth between the two teams. 
each trying to salvage below 500 records. The blue and gold managed to pull it off in the final set, 15 to 13. However, thanks in large part to Hannah McGarry. The sophomore hitter drilled four of her 13 kills in the last frame. The Explorers will open a 10 play by hosting St. Louis and Dayton on September 25th and 26th. Hoping to rebound from the 3-2 loss to Ryder in the 13th, the field hockey team headed to North Carolina on September 18th to open conference play with Davidson. The Wildcats struck first in the 21st minute, with the Explorers playing catch-up from here on. In the 51st, Davidson added another score despite solid gameplay from LaSalle goalie Rachel Hartman. The only blue and gold point came off a penalty rip from Eileen's Will. The Explorers made a push as the clock wound down, but they couldn't overcome the early goals, losing 2-1. to one. And remaining in North Carolina, LaSalle rested for a day before taking on Appalachian State on Sunday, September 20th. The team began the bout well with Jenica Miller sliding a penalty pass straight to Abby Lawrence for a beautiful score in the sixth minute. However, this didn't hold up as the game went on. After the Mountaineers managed to beat Hartman and Nett in the 22nd minute, the match was locked until the 62nd. Appalachian State managed to slip one by our defense once again, and even with a 16-12 lead with shots and five more corners, the Explorers offense couldn't make it happen. This leaves the Explorers record at 2-5. and five. Both the men's and women's tennis teams were unable to defeat rival Temple on the 19th, losing 7 to nothing each. For the women, sophomore Jade Smith and freshman Alexandra Santorelli teamed up in doubles play, only to lose 8-1. to one. The scoreless day continued in singles play as Jade Smith was shut out in the first set and lost after only scoring one point in set two. Alexandra Santorelli also struggled as she only scored three times in the first set and was shut out in the second. The men's performance was similar. Both junior Brian Balico and junior Mark Robinson lost in a doubles match after only getting one point on the board for a final score of 8-1. to one. In singles play for the men, sophomore Joseph DiOrio lost his match after the first two sets and putting up a fight in set two before losing six to four. The struggles continued when sophomore explorer Liam Rodriguez lost his singles match as well as he was shut out in the first two sets. And women's soccer suffered their fourth loss of the season down Broad Street on the 18th. The rival Temple Owls shut the Explorers out three to nothing, securing the win with stingy defense and consistent offense. Temple goalkeeper Jordan Nash was lights out between the posts with six saves on the day. The Owls scored early with a deflection, a goal off a LaSalle defender, but the Explorers held their ground to trial only 1-0 at the half. However, after the break, the Owls notched another one in the 69th minute thanks to the Sarah McGlynn. The third goal was scored in the 74th, this time off the foot of Aaron Lafferty. The Explorers will begin conference play on a two-game losing streak at Massachusetts on October 1st. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to take, real quick, I need to point this out. Um, if you remember, this was a long time ago, last week, uh, Jake was on desk with, with Anna Gomez and I, and Jake gave his picks of the week, first edition ever, and he did very well, by the way. Thank you. Um, but something stood out. Jake predicted a specific outcome for one particular game. It was the men's soccer game against UMBC. If we could just real quick roll the clip from last episode, let's just see what Jake said last week. But what I'm going to say is I'm going to say 1-0 Explorers it's going to be a tight battle of the defenses, and I would not rule out a tie. Well. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so, <laughs> good stuff. The good stuff? Good yeah. stuff. So anyway, <laughs> men's soccer raised their record over 500 in a big way on Saturday, September 19th, when they defeated nationally ranked UMBC. Yes. And LaSalle's defense took center stage in the showdown as the Retrievers outshot the Explorers 16-6, However, the MVP of the day was sophomore Joe Hansen. The father judge product had uh, his moment in the second half where he blocked a clear attempt by the retrievers and fired a shot into the back of the net in the 69th minute. This stood as the only goal in the contest as Mike Kirk and the rest of the defense kept the opposition at bay for the one nothing shutout. Ah, well, uh, just savor that because it's not often that Jake is correct about things, believe it or not. Um, anyway, men's soccer would follow this up with a loss to number 17 Temple on the 23rd by a score of 4-1. to one. Uh, LaSalle's lone goal came in the 85th minute thanks to junior Connor, Connor Nichols, but by then the Explorers were cooked. Uh, the men will return to action Saturday 26, the 26th of September against the LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds. But we're going to take a detour right now into the weekly awards. Um, Big weekly accomplishment for somebody. Not only did the men's soccer team fulfill Jake's prophecy last episode and upset UMBC one to nothing, but 
Goalkeeper Mike Kirk earned both A-10 Co-Player of the Week as well as Soccer 6 Defender of the Week. The senior leads the conference with his three shutouts on the season and shares that A-10 achievement with Dayton's Amas Amankana. We'll have more on, the, on Mike Kirk later in the show. Anyway, does it for the game recaps. It's time for our first break, but please don't touch the remote. So help me. Because after the break, we'll have my chat with men's soccer captain and star Joe Farrell. So stay tuned. Jump into the fun at the fourth annual Explore Your Health Community Health Fair. On Saturday, October 10th, from 10 to 3 p.m., the shops at LaSalle will be hosting an array of events, including face painting, informational tables about nutritional tips and health screenings, massages, a 50-50 raffle, and live student performances. Come out and join the fun. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. Until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. Dude. They're not looking out for you. Engage. A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected Sorry. with strong, healthy bones. All right. And so, yeah, welcome back. I had the chance to sit down and chat with LaSalle men's soccer star, Joe Farrell. So, take a look. All right, welcome to another edition of On the Sidelines, first one of the year. And we are sitting right now with senior uh, of kind of the men's soccer team, Joe Farrell. Thank you so much yep. for coming out. Thanks for having me, Jake. All right, so you've had a pretty solid start of the season, especially with the men's team. Uh, you guys are, have the chance to do some serious, like, climbing the rankings and everything. But first, in your game against uh, Siena, right? Uh, or Loyola. Loyola, sorry. Yeah, right now. Okay, game against Loyola. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Uh, sh like just beautiful shot in the last couple of minutes. Uh, can you run me through how that just play worked out? Well, uh, the play was actually a, a free kick. It was a corner from mm -hmm. the, the, the right side. And in practice, we, we work on corners, restarts, and free kicks all the time because they're so important in, mm -hmm. in every game. Um, so it was a, a, a corner from the right side, and Tony Daniele put in a ball and I saw the keeper was staying on his line and it was whipping in towards the net. So I came in and I, 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 um, I beat my man to the ball and, and I headed in the, in, into the back post, so. Beautiful. Yep, no, thank gosh. you. No, that was that like, what I've kind of noticed from your guys' team so far this year is just these clutch plays are coming in at those like perfect moments, making sure you guys aren't losing those opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess in what you're just kind of just saying, like you guys practicing like these corner kicks and everything all the time, what do you think the tone of like, the practice has been for like the year? Is it like fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals? Like, uh, well, I would think that the tone of the practice is, is we try to try to establish a, a solid defensive uh, backfield first, and then from there we build forward. So, so in the last three games, we've only given up one goal, and we've ended up winning all three games. So. Um, <clears throat> So from that, we, we've been able to, to establish our defense early in games, and really from there, we build forward, get our midfield involved, and then it seems like in the second half, we've been, been lucky to, to come up clutch and find a, a game-winning goal when yeah. we need it. Okay, so you guys, so the last three then? Uh, Were, uh, we beat Loyola, uh, Siena, and then number 23, UMBC. Okay, now we gotta, I gotta talk, we got to talk about that game. Yeah, because of course. That when I because I was watching like like all like the Twitter updates on that, mm -hmm. that was one of the tightest games I've seen like like at least well not necessarily seen but you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. right in a while um, I was on the edge of my toes like, like just the edge of, like just sitting there <laughs> just completely dialed in um, but tell me like I'm guessing that defense was the key to that win definitely um, they had a very high high powered attack I would say um, they actually got a transfer who was transfer from UVA who won the national championship last year. His name's Darius Madison. He's one of my uh, longtime friends. Really? So he was playing up top for them. Uh, he's, he's always a threat, but um, throughout their midfield, throughout their forwards, they have players who can make significant plays and, and, and score goals. But as a, as a unit, we were very solid throughout all 11 players on the field. We were all defending, all hustling, and, and all working for each other. So. Yeah. In the end, we ended up getting a shutout and a one nothing win. 
It's, it's just so yeah. great A stuff. Yeah. Uh, so then I guess, if you talk to me then, um, coming up actually uh, on Wednesday, um, today's the 23rd, right? I believe so. 23rd, yeah. yeah. Um, so Wednesday 23rd, um, you guys, Temple. Yeah, we, have, we play Temple 3 o'clock today. Oh man. Yeah. And right now we're currently filming this at uh, 10.30 <laughs> on Thursday, so, or on Wednesday. So right now we are getting like the immediate, like right yeah. before the game. Pre-game, yeah. pre-game <laughs> of pre -game Temple, yep. This is, we, we're technically on Sports Center right now. That's oh, basically it. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, so tell me though, so for this Temple game, what do you think is going to need to happen for you guys to come away with this win? Well, uh, right now Temple is having one of their best starts they've had in a long time. They're, they're I believe they're 6-0-1 uh, undefeated and they're number 17th in, in the country. So we're going we're gonna to try and do what we always do and, and establish the defense early and get the ball to our feet and be able to attack from there. So hopefully, hopefully we, we play well on defense. Our goal is always to get a, a, a clean sheet, a shutout. Mm -hmm. So hopefully if, if they're not scoring, we could hopefully put it off and try and find the goal first half, second half, whenever it happens. Yeah, well, it sounds like you guys are going to, this is going to be a really tense game. Yeah. Um, I feel like you guys are really prepared for it on this mm -hmm. like crazy streak. And um, I definitely think you guys are completely capable of that. Um, but I guess kind of going back to your LaSalle career now, um, as a senior, and you know, you've, you've just worked your way up through like, the, like these seasons and everything, um, how would you describe this experience, especially as you're kind of entering into your last season? It's amazing. Um, I've, had, I've had a great four years at LaSalle. Um, my freshman year, sophomore year, they were all great. Junior, uh, I, I was actually a captain. This year I'm captain again. So. It's been, a, it's been a growing experience for me, and I've learned a lot, I've matured a lot, both as a, as a player and, and also as a person, so I couldn't really ask for much more. That's, that's, that's awesome. Um, yep. So I gotta ask then, um, I know like some of our guys, uh, you know, have uh, decided to kind of follow up and go on yeah. playing soccer. Are you uh, debating going out into the... Um, well, uh, if the opportunity presents itself, yeah, it's, it's been my dream for a while to, to play soccer at, at the highest level yeah. possible. So if I have an opportunity to go on and play professionally somewhere, mm -hmm. I, could, I could see myself taking that. But if not, I also, this past summer, I had an internship with mm -hmm. Johnson Johnson. So Ooh. LaSalle has set me up that I have multiple options. Oh, that, that's thank, a, thankfully. That's perfect. Yep. So then I gotta ask then, um, for the rest of this year though, what is, what is your goal? Like, is it to just be as well-rounded of a player as possible, try to like, um, just really be there with the team? Like, are you, like, what's, what's your, gonna be your role this year? Well, my individual role, um, I wanna be the team leader. I, I, wanna, I wanna lead this team to multiple victories and as a team goal, and I think it's very achievable this year, I, I wanna win the A-10 tournament. We haven't done it in countless years, so. If we do that, we would get an NCAA bid and Oof. live to see another day. <laughs> yep. That is also my dream. Um, that would be <laughs> absolutely incredible to yeah. get to see you guys just make your way through that. Yeah. Hey, I definitely think that's uh, possible. And so I guess my final question of the interview then, uh, this is one that we've been, uh, I mean, this has been in like the workshop for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I gotta ask, this is completely unrelated. Yeah. You're at Happy Fortune on the weekend. Cheesesteak roll or pizza roll? I'm a pizza roll guy. All right, classic, right. yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. Simple, beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's an elegant dish. Ele whatever. Elegant, yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you though so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, make sure, uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep track of the season. We'll keep get keep getting Great. you guys updates. Um, yeah. So, thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, no, thank you for um, having yeah. me. Yep. Joe Farrell, senior on the senior captain of the soccer team. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and uh, yeah, uh, that's it for on the sidelines and back to the desk. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. You're, you're great. Um, yeah, no, thanks to Joe Farrell, too. So anyway, it's time for another break, but stick around. Tyler Harper will be here with us on desk to give you this week's Exploring Headlines. All right, thanks. You do me, Jerry Mathers, from the television show Leave it to Beaver. I've been diagnosed with the disease, diabetic, Peripheral Neuropathy, or DPN. DPN is damage to the nerve tissue of the peripheral nervous system. 60 to 70% of people with diabetes have some form of neuropathy. The most common form affects the hands and feet and can cause pain, burning sensation, and in severe cases, total loss of feeling. People with DPN need to take special care of their feet. 
More than half of the lower limb amputations occur in people with diabetes. Be proactive, monitor your blood glucose levels, follow medication therapies, and maintain proper foot health with your podiatrist. It worked for me. To learn more about DPN, go to www.neuropathyaction.org. Welcome back. Now, on to some exploring headlines. Here joining us, STP's Tyler Harper. Tyler, how are you? I'm doing well, Brendan. Let's get to it. It appears Mike Kirk of the men's soccer team had an even better week than usual. The senior goalkeeper was named to the national team of the week by College Soccer News after his performances against both Ryder and UMBC. Kirk made six saves against the Bronx and shut out the nationally ranked retrievers. Congrats to both the men's and women's soccer teams who were, who were awarded academic honors by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. LaSalle is one of only 208 schools to have both the men's and women's teams do so. This is also the 13th straight year for the women to achieve this and the fifth time in the past nine years for the men. LaSalle community members helped the university kick off its first ever Walk with the Women of LaSalle Athletics to raise funds for women's sports. The walk is scheduled for Saturday, November 14th on homecoming weekend and will begin at 11 a.m. at McCarthy Stadium. For more information, visit GoExplorers.com. Well, Tyler, thank you for joining us. Uh, so. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now that we've covered the past, <laughs> let's look to the future. And Kevin Cook has your latest marquee matchup, so check it out. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the marquee matchup. I'm Kevin Cook, and I'm here to tell you about the exciting field hockey matchup this weekend. The field hockey season is a couple of weeks in, and it has been a competitive start for the women thus far. The blue and gold have struggled early on, currently 2-5 and five with losses in the previous three games. But they will have a chance to make up some ground this weekend as they take on Lockhaven. The women have lost by one goal four times this year, and a big reason for that is junior goalie Rachel Hartman. Hartman started every game last year for LaSalle and led the A-10 in save percentage. Hartman has continued to impress as she gives up an average of only two goals a game. We hope to see Hartman continue this effort Friday. Another key player is junior Gina Smith. Number five leads the blue and gold in points and is tied for the lead in goals. She has been an essential player in the five games she competed in, and the Explorers will need our offense to beat Lockhaven. Another player Lockhaven has to watch out for is sophomore Kendall Kreider. She has earned A-10 All-Rookie Honors last year and has also had success this season. Kreider is tied for the most assists on the team. She will be indispensable if LaSalle wants to jump Lockhaven in the standings. If the Blue and Gold want to turn the season around, they will need to end their current losing streak, especially if they want to go far in the A-10 tournament. The field hockey team will also look to continue their, their success at home. The Explorers are 1-0 at home and they play their next four games with that advantage. Finally, to continue their home success, the women up front need to test the goalie early and often. Lockhaven has not let up more than one goal a game. Make sure you get to the Vincent Field this weekend to watch the Blue and Gold take on Lockhaven. For Sportsline, I'm Kevin Cook. Go Explorers! All right, yeah, exciting game ahead for field hockey, but there are plenty of other games to check out. And so, once again, it is time for my absolute favorite piece, Picks of the Week. All right, so going into this, um, this next week, I got a couple of games that I'm really getting amped up for. But first one I gotta go on though, um, I'm gonna have to say this is gonna be a 3-1 loss for volleyball versus the St. Louis Billikens. 3-1 loss. Just bear with me. Um, the Billikens are an incredibly talented team. I'm gonna be realistic for this segment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if not everything is sugar-coated. But um, with LaSalle's women's volleyball, we've been incredibly strong at home, putting up serious points. Hannah McGarry, Taylor Height, um, all these people are putting up incredible stats, incredible scores, but on the road, we've been incredibly inconsistent. Um, but however, at home, I think we are playing against a really solid, very strong team. I think we're going to at least be able to plot one set, 3-1. That's, that's my realistic goal. In a perfect world, obviously, we would be winning 3-2, but uh, we're going to see what happens. Um, but then, for my next game, I'm going to say men's soccer versus LaSalle and uh, <laughs> men's soccer versus Villanova. And I'm going to say it's going to be a 2-1 to one win. Uh, it's been an incredibly complex um, season for the men's team. Um, some of the most incredible games. We're coming off of strong wins against UMBC. Like, I can't even deal with that. I'm still reeling over that, actually. Still reeling. I don't know. Um, so I think that we're going to have a really good chance to prove ourselves against Villanova in the Big Five. 
Um, I think it's just going to be an overall just a beautiful game. And so I think we're going to go 2-1. 2-1. Does that, does that sound realistic to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not making the picks, Jake. It's all you. But 2-1 can... sounds good to me. I don't know. I all think right. it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and um, I guess for my last pick, once again, I'm going to be a bit of a downer on this. Um, field hockey versus St. Louis coming up. Um, once again, the Billikens are a tough team. I'm pretty sure they're 7-2 and two right now. Um, they've been sweeping the board. I'm going to say 3-1 to one loss for field hockey. But listen, I'm only doing this so I can be proved right. That's all I want. I just want the recognition. <laughs> but that's it for wow. my picks of the week. <laughs> Wowie. Well, I will keep those just in my mind the whole week. Yeah. And the minute I see any results, I'm contacting you. Thank you. It'll happen. Thank you so much. Well, anyway, <laughs> that just about wraps it up for this week. And if you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com and by following us on Twitter at, at SportslineLTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LaSalleTV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. So, for Tyler, Kevin, and our entire Sportsline team, I'm Jake Smolenski. And I'm Brendan Rigney. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you at the game.